Last week, I, I talked about the fact that for the next few weeks, what I want to explore with you, and for myself too, is really what's moving in our community. What's, what's coming up for us, and who are we? Who do we say we are, and what are we about? And what, uh, what are we about as far as our inclusion in the unity movement? Who are we in that? And, and getting some clarity, I think for myself, as well as for all of us, is really what I want to do. And last week I talked about the idea of our, us calling ourselves Christian, or might my, my prefer the, the term Christians. And so I talked about that last week and what that means for us. And so this week I want to talk about the word G-O-D um, and our use or not use of that word. And so I understand, for, for me, I think it can be um, can stimulate some feeling and some thought, and, and I'm guessing that it will stimulate some things for you as well. And um, I think that's good. You know, somebody told me once that a minister's job was to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And so I hope I'm not going to be afflicting you too much, but I think sometimes it's important for us to look at our, you know, what we're thinking, what's going on, and uh, maybe kind of get out of our comfort zone a little bit sometimes. I know it's good for me, because sometimes I can get stuck in my own little comfort zone. So as we explore these concepts, just, just know that I'm exploring them. I'm not saying this is the fact. This is the way it is. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the gospel according to David. I'm just saying these are some of the thoughts I've had, and I want to share them with you. And so I've, things have come up about this use of the word G-O-D. And um, several things have come up. Somebody told me uh, not long ago that they really wanted me to, to talk about God more. They wanted to hear me say and to, to affirm that God loves them. I want to hear that God loves me. I want to have that idea of God, and I want you to share that with me more often. And I've had other people who said, it came up recently, that why are we not using the word God in some of our songs? Why are we replacing that word with other words? And then something else that came up around that, and again, I just want to address what's coming up in the community. One was that I kind of I like to say that we affirm that we are God-expressing. And somebody said, well, I can't affirm that I'm God. I can affirm that I am an expression of God, but I can't really say, it's not quite in alignment with me to say, I am God expressing. And so I wanted to look at that and kind of look at, you know, I understand I do tend to avoid the word God. Because, mainly because we don't, really share a common understanding of what that word means. You know, I know what I mean when I say the word God, but you might not know what I mean when I say the word God. I mean, you know what you mean when you say the word God, but I don't necessarily know what you mean. I can make a whole lot of assumptions about what you mean when you say God. I mean, I can say this is a book, and we all have a common understanding of that. I mean, we may have different images that come up in our minds, but God is one of those words that has so much baggage, so much energy from centuries of use, and so it's part of our collective consciousness. So I think it's important for us to explore what we believe about that, because I really do believe that what we believe about that has a great impact on our lives, how we live our lives, and how we see ourselves. And uh, there's an old saying that says, I can't remember, I did look it up, and I apologize, I don't remember who said it, that in the beginning, God created man in his own image, and man has been trying to return the favor ever since. <laughs> you know? That idea that we create a God of our own making, our own image, trying to understand what that is. And it evolves. You know, you can even, in the Bible, you can even see how the understanding of G-O-D has evolved. You know, that we have God walking in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, and then we turn around later, and he's a judging God that kicks them out. 
of the garden. So God becomes this judging uh, God of rules and regulations. And if you don't obey these rules and regulations, then you're damned to hell or some way punished. So God has, God in some ways became a God of reward if you're good or punishment if you're bad. And I think that's the God that I grew up with. This idea of a judging, condemning, and capricious God. That if you pray hard enough to ask God to bless you, then you'll be blessed. But if you're not quite praying the right way, that you're not going to receive what you pray for. And so I have a problem with that kind of God. I have a problem with that kind of God. I, um, and so I do tend to kind of shy away from that because I think there's a lot of, like a lot of confusion. And what is what, you know, I'm kind of exploring what does unity talk, what does unity believe about God? And I'm not sure that's even really clear either. <laughs> so um, just kind of sharing with you. So um, the idea that we create that God of our own image, in our own image, and that God can become for us a big man in the sky, God can become a, a source, God can become like Santa Claus, God can become all of these, all of these ideas. And so, um, I know for me, I avoided using the word God totally for many years. I didn't want to hear the word God, and if somebody else said it, I was like, get away from me. I don't want to hear about God. Because of that damning, condemning, capricious God that I grew up with. And so, I'm, many of you know about my search for G.O.D. came when I got involved in a 12-step recovery program. And I will tell you, when it came to turning my will and my life over to the care of God, as I understood God, I said, no way in hell am I turning my will and my life over to that kind of God. I'm not going to do it. But I knew in order for me to be in the program and to be in recovery, I had to find a God, an idea of a higher power, that I was willing to turn my will and my life over to. And I went in search of God. And that search led me to unity. And it led me to this idea of God that is loving, God is love. God is embracing. God is accepting. God is inclusive. God is all of these wonderful ideas that we hold about God. And that felt much better to me. That felt much better to me. And so I was willing to turn my will and my life over to that kind of God. And what I recognize, even about Unity's idea of God, my idea, my understanding of that, that God, and even the idea of a higher power still separated me from G-O-D. It was something that was outside of me. And so that doesn't necessarily work for me either. So, uh, continuing to explore and to evolve my understanding of what I mean when I say G-O-D. And what I love about the unity movement is that, you know, unity claims that it is positive, practical, progressive Christianity. Progressive just meaning that we're open to new revelation, to new understanding, to new illumination of truth, God and good and truth. And so what does that mean? How are we open? So we can evolve our understanding of G-O-D. And I love that. I love that I'm continuing to evolve, and hopefully we're all continuing to evolve in our understanding of what that is because I think it's really important for us to understand. Really, because it is so, for me, it is so crucial and instrumental and integral to what we teach in unity. And basically, you know, what we teach in New Thought. 
And so I wanted to share with you a reading from, this is from Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, and this is from the book Jesus Christ Heals. Now, I'm guessing as I read this, I want to invite you to just be with anything that comes up for you and your own, maybe, allergies. (laughs) So particular words or ideas or concepts about G-O-D. Fillmore says, even in metaphysics, concepts of God, the impression in concepts of God, the impression left us is of a creator great in power, wisdom, and love. In one sense, this is true. But the standard by which man compares and judges these qualities in his mind determines his concept of God. And then he goes on to say, I'm skipping some, but God is wisdom, intelligence. But if we mean by that that God is intelligent, that his knowledge consists of judgments, and inferences that are made in a universe of things, then we should say that God is non-intelligent. God is substance. But if we mean by this that God is matter, that is God is the stuff itself, a thing in time, space, condition, we should say that God is substanceless. God is love. Here's, a, here's one that might stimulate something. <laughs> God is love. But if we mean by this that God is the love that loves a particular child better than all children, or that loves some particular father or mother better than all fathers or mothers, or that loves one person better than some other person, or that has chosen people whom he loves better than some other people whom he has not chosen, then we should say that God is unloving. God does not exercise power. God is that all-present and all-quiet powerlessness from which man and woman generates that which we call power. God does not manifest intelligence. God does not manifest intelligence. God is the unobtrusive knowing in everyone, which, when acknowledged, flashes forth into intelligence. God is not matter, nor confined in any way to the idea of substance termed matter. God is that intelligible essence that man has formed and called matter. Thus, matter is a limitation of the divine substance whose vital and inherent character is above all else limitless. All right, here we go. God is not loving. How does that stimulate something for anybody? God is not loving, God is love. The great heart of the universe and of mankind from which is drawn forth all feeling, sympathy, emotion, and all that goes up to make up the joys of existence. God God does not love anybody or anything. Stimulate something for you? God is the love in everybody and everything. God is love. You become loving by permitting that which God is to find expression in word and act. You become that which is loving when you acknowledge and receive and align with the love that God is. God is the still small voice in every soul that heals and blesses and uplifts. 
And it is the only through the soul that God is made manifest as perfect wholeness. Drop from your mind the idea that God is a being of majesty and power in the same way that you now interpret majesty and power. Drop from your mind the belief that God is in any way separated from you or that God can be manifest in you in any way except through your own consciousness. And so, what that says to me is that that which we call G-O-D is all of these ideas, all of these concepts that we call good, like love. God is, if we think of that love, God is love and God is all the love that is possible. God is all the light that is possible. God is all the peace that is possible. God is all the joy that is possible. God is all the abundance that is possible. God is all that is possible. It's pure possibility, pure potential. God is. That's what I think of when I think of God. And that God, that God, that idea of God has life through you and me. that we become that idea and expression when we're willing to align with that. And however God manifests as you depends on you. Not some outside power. It's depending on your willingness and my willingness to acknowledge And to align with love and peace and joy and power and abundance and prosperity and all of those ideas that we associate with G-O-D. And so to say that I am God in expression or I am God expressing is a true statement. And yet... I am God expressing at the level of my own consciousness. Right? I am God expressing at the level of my own conscious willingness and ability to claim love and peace and joy and abundance and prosperity as my truth. And so it is in that way, I believe, that we create God. We create the God of our own understanding in every moment. Because we are created as the image likeness in the pure potential and possibility for all the love that is, all the light that is, all the joy that is, all the peace that is. And as in every moment, that I get to create and align with the God that I need in the moment. If I am experiencing illness in my human body, then my God is going to be a God of wholeness and life and vitality. And I'm going to choose to align with that knowing, that aspect of G-O-D. So in that way, God becomes a healer in my life. But I am creating my image of God. For somebody else, it may be I'm feeling lonely and afraid. And so I I reach for a God which is love and acceptance and understanding. And so in that moment, God for me becomes love. I create the God of my need and my understanding in every moment depending on where I am. What I know, what I believe is that God is not a thing. God is not a static thing. My understanding of God is that God is all that, moving, always expressing, always available to you and to me. But as Charles Fillmore said, 
It depends on our consciousness. I would say that we always are creating our own awareness of G-O-D, God. Even somebody who says that they are atheist creates a God that they choose not to believe in. Right? I mean, how can you say you don't believe in something unless there's something not to believe in? Makes sense, right? So we're always creating the God of our need, the God of our awareness, the God that is in alignment with our consciousness in the moment. And so when you hear me say, God, I want to be clear that I'm not talking about a being. I'm not talking about a, a, a great being out there somewhere. I love what Linda Martella Whitsett says in her book about the 12 powers of divine audacity. She talks about it as godness. Godness. Or goddessness, however you want to, to use that. It's the expression It's the activity, it's the movement of Godness as life, as love, as joy, as peace, as abundance, prosperity, wholeness, all those things that Charles Fillmore calls divine ideas. And that's how we connect with Godness. So maybe we might want to say, I am Godness. Expressing, or I am goddessness. Expressing. And as we do that, as we continue to claim, God is love and I am love. God is light and I am light. God is peace and I am peace. We condition our minds, our consciousness with that truth. And the more we do that, the more we align ourselves, and the more we embody. Now, when I say embody, I'm talking about first embodying it in our consciousness. That it becomes our understanding of who we are. Our consciousness is filled with the ideas of God. And we embody it first there. And then we can manifest it. But again, it's not dependent upon a capricious God. It's dependent upon your willingness to do something with it. So God shows up as you and as me in our willingness to be the love that we think God is. To be the peace that we believe God is. To be the power that we believe God is. To be the compassion that we believe God is. Eddie Watkins Jr. has a song called I'm the Place where God shows up. I love that. And so we get to claim that for ourselves. I am the place. It is my greatest intention, even though I may not fully realize it all the time, that it is my greatest intention to be the place where Godness shows up as love and understanding and wisdom, and strength, and power, and imagination, and order, and will, and all of those ideas that God is.